Hello, dear friends. Um, Happy New Year. Uh, this is the first lecture after uh, uh, the New Year, uh, 2022. So I wish a happy and prosperous uh, 2022 for everyone. Uh, this is uh, lecture eight, according to my online uh, free lecture series uh, on mechanical vibration. It is about response of damp system and rotating unbalance. So I'm going to uh, deliver uh, uh, a small lecture on this. And then we'll take some uh, practical examples. What are those, uh, you know, the effect of uh, rotating unbalance or some eccentric mass on the machineries, how it causes vibration to the system and how we can uh, reduce those things or mitigate the uh, unexpected uh, uh, resonance condition on this uh, machinery. So uh, please uh, pay attention and follow. And whenever, uh, actually, uh, I didn't see anyone who commented on uh, most of my lectures. If any questions, any uh, uh, queries or you can say what's over. So uh, you have to put it uh, on my YouTube uh, channel, then we can communicate uh, each other. Maybe it seems like important for you, but no one responded. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm saying. So let me start with uh, this lecture. In mechanical system, uh, we have a lot of rotating components, uh, especially uh, when we are transmitting power or when we are performing some mechanical tasks. Uh, we run machineries with some RPM. And the machineries are not, uh, rotating machineries are not manufactured with a perfect uh, uh, shape or a kind of different uh, errors may happen on the machines. Uh, that can be uh, 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 one part of the thing which we are going to see. So uh, let's see how a small eccentric mass can affect our machineries and how it causes vibration to the machine and how we can solve or how we can analyze those vibrations. So uh, <clears throat> balance in uh, rotating machineries is one of the main causes of vibration. That this is now. So in such system, uh, we may have uh, the total mass of the whole system. That is the mass of the whole machinery, and also a small machine, uh, a small mass, uh, which is placed at some eccentric distance from the rotation center. And then when we are running the machine with high RPM, then it starts to uh, excite the vibration on the uh, whole structure. And if we neglect it, it will uh, further cause the total uh, collapse of the system. So we must mitigate uh, such system before it uh, cause uh, damage to the system. So for this uh, case, I consider the uh, uh, a uh, rotating machine like this, uh, which is on elastic foundation. We can see a four spring uh, system here, uh, spring one, spring two, and behind of this, we can see two springs are there, and which is supported with uh, a viscous damping system. So uh, this is the model of this machine. So 2K represents uh, the two, uh, spring constants, K, K, uh, another K and K. There are four spring model or four springs are considered here. So that 2K from one side and another 2K from another side. And the machineries, uh, we constrained it only uh, the uh, vibration in the vertical direction only. In the horizontal, it is, it is constrained to this wall and this wall. We can see here roller representation. This is equivalent system for this machinery. So it is, uh, uh, it is expected to vibrate in the vertical direction only. 
the horizontal component is uh, fully constrained. Uh, so uh, these are expected boundary conditions here. Okay, we have damper or dam, uh, viscous damping constant C given. And the total mass of this machinery is considered, uh, is represented with capital M. And the small mass, which is at offset distance of uh, rotation center. We have this rotation center. And there is a small mass here, which is situated at offset distance of E. E is eccentric distance. And this um, omega represents the uh, rotational uh, speed of uh, the RPM of the machinery. Uh, we can resemble it with RPM, okay? So uh, this is the representation. Now, uh, the force produced due to this eccentric mass is, uh, uh, is a centrifugal force, which is m uh, omega square e. e is our radius r. So, m omega square e is the centrifugal force, which is pushing out uh, the structure uh, at every radial distance uh, from the center. And then when we resolve this uh, force, centrifugal force into vertical and horizontal axis, we can see uh, in the vertical, it is m omega uh, e sine omega t. Okay, so uh, because if we resolve this into sine and the cos component, considering this omega t, so that will be uh, uh, sine omega t to the vertical and cos omega t to the horizontal. So the horizontal component is uh, just, uh, it is constrained so that uh, it will be uh, neglected from this analysis. We consider only the vertical component, which can cause the excitation or uh, an excessive amplitude of the structure. Okay, so uh, that part will be our discussion point. So the, uh, total vertical component is uh, m e, uh, this m, m omega square e is the centrifugal force, then sine omega t is the vertical component. And the horizontal component is m, e, uh, m omega square e cos omega t. Now, considering the vertical component, the general equation of motion is uh, for the system is mx dot dot plus cx dot plus kx, which is equal to m omega square uh, e sine omega t. So this is the vertical component of the vibratory motion equation. So this is equation of motion. Now, the solution for this uh, equation of motion, uh, that the steady state solution, uh, or particular solution of this uh, equation is x sine omega t minus uh, pi. So this pi is the phase angle, and x is the maximum amplitude or steady state amplitude of the vibration. And in the complex format, uh, we can also represent it uh, like this uh, in the complex conjugate form uh, that uh, mu over m omega over omega n square h, uh, h of uh, i omega of e is a power of uh, i omega t minus pi. This is also another uh, representation, okay? So let's consider this uh, in our case that xp of uh, t, which is equal to x sine omega t minus pi. Now here, um, uh, omega n is, uh, uh, in this representative, it is a, a radical of t over m and pi and uh, x are denotes the amplitude and the phase angle. So x is equals to, uh, as we know, for uh, f of t is equals to, uh, just to uh, give you a small clue on this. Uh, okay, so uh, in our case previously for uh, a forced function, f of t is equal to, uh, f of t is equal to f naught sine omega t in our previous lecture actually sine 
omega t. Then our solution, uh, solution x particular is equal to uh, x uh, sine omega t minus pi. Actually, this is the forcing function. At the same time, uh, the this x, the steady state amplitude x is given by x is equal to f naught f naught over uh, radical of these quantities k k uh, k minus m omega square the forcing frequency omega square as a whole square plus CW, the whole square. Okay, this, everything is under radical. Similar to this, now in our case, um, this, instead of F naught, we have M E omega square or M omega square E. So that we directly substituted it instead of this F naught. Okay, so that the uh, maximum amplitude of forcing function for uh, quantity. So this is substituted. Again, then uh, rearranging uh, this uh, M comes out from here. Okay, M is here, XM. And um, this M comes here. Okay, I'm just taking out uh, M's out and uh, M E came here. So that X and E. And another thing, R squared means it is omega over uh, R is equal to uh, frequency ratio. That is omega over omega N. Omega over omega N. So what omega N? Omega N is K over N. Here, in this case, it is capital M, not the small M. We can take capital M in our case. Okay. So when M comes out, uh, the component here, uh, K over M. So we have here um, omega N comes. So omega N square. So omega over omega N square will give us uh, one minus R square. And CW is uh, two zeta R. We already related it in uh, other discussions so that someone can refer uh, my lecture in the previous. And the pi is equal to uh, CW over K minus M omega square, which means uh, instead of this uh, damping parameter, zeta, two zeta R over one minus R square. So these both the representations are also uh, fine. So what the variation, this MX over ME uh, uh, variation with zeta, how we can uh, define those things? So at a very high speed omega, that means high uh, rotation of the machinery, Mx over M is almost unit. That means uh, it is uh, going to one around here. Okay, like Z over Y it means Mx over M E means like Z over Y here. We can find uh, it is unit. So the effect of damping is negligible. So around here, the damping is effect is negligible. You see, the variation of damping with um, damping ratio, almost here, nothing. All converge to these points. This is uh, the point where Mx over Me is equal to one, okay? For uh, zero to uh, one over radical two uh, means zeta value uh, varies from zero to uh, one over radical two. Then the maximum of Mx over Me occurs. So uh, when we come to here, it is um, uh, zeta values uh, goes to uh, this value means uh, where it is, we can get 
Okay, uh, for this zeta is 0 0.5. Uh, for this zeta is equals to one, that is critical damping. Okay, these are under damped case. Okay, zeta 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.00, 0 0.00 means that is almost, uh, it is condition of resonance, zeta zero means uh, undamped case. Zeta zero undamped, zeta one critical damped, and this is underdamped case. So around um, one over radical two of zeta value, then N makes over M me occurs a maximum value. Okay, N makes, uh, N makes over M me. So that is maximum value occur. Uh, this means what? Uh, using the maximum condition that D of uh, derivative of MX uh, with respect to ME uh, with respect to R, that is damp uh, frequency ratio R, we substitute the MX or ME uh, equation. This is the equation, uh, which gives us, uh, which is equal to zero. This is the maximum condition. Okay. So from this, we calculate the R value. So finally we get R is equals to one over radical of one minus two zeta squared, which is greater than one. So the corresponding maximum value of MX over M is equals to one over two zeta uh, radical of one minus zeta squared. So that is the maximum uh, condition. For zeta greater than one over uh, radical two, mx or me uh, uh, does not attain a maximum. This is value uh, grow from zero to um, at r is equal to zero to one at r is equal to infinity. Okay, so that is the condition. And the force transmitted to foundation due to uh, rotating unbalanced force, uh, f of f, can be found by uh, f of t, which is equal to kx plus cx dot. Means uh, the force transmitted to the foundation or the uh, base can be calculated from this equation. And the magnitude uh, of f can be found as f of t is equal to kx plus cx, that is uh, the force transmitted to the foundation. And then for x of t is equals to x sine omega t, then this x dot is equal to x dot of t uh, omega x cos omega t. So uh, substituting these equations into uh, this equation, we can get uh, this relation. So <clears throat> we have f of t is equals to uh, kx sine omega t plus c w x cos omega t. So when we uh, bring this equation into uh, one form, uh, less uh, this maximum amplitude uh, of this uh, sine and cos to a, which is equal to kx square plus c w x square as a and sine omega t minus pi represents this sine omega t and the cos omega t is the phase difference between sine and the cos. That means uh, phase angle, theta. So the force transmitted to the foundation f of t is equal to a sine omega t plus theta, for which a is equal to x times k square plus c w square under radical. So Again, substituting this equation into the previous uh, uh, equation in, in the place of x, okay, uh, what you can get <coughs> means we have uh, this equation, yeah, uh, m e omega square, uh, and this uh, equation. So we can substitute f of t. Uh, uh, f of t is equals to this uh, maximum amplitude of uh, f of t is this one. Then f of t is equals to, um, yeah. Okay, x is equal to this. 
Yeah, it gives us f of t is equal to m omega square radical of k square plus c w square over this thing. Means m e w square over radical of k minus m omega square the whole square plus c w square represents x value. Okay, it is x value. Why uh, our f of t uh, is equal to uh, this thing? x times. So I uh, substituted the x equation from the previous equation. x equation means this one, uh, this, this equation. This is x. This x will be substituted to uh, here, here in the, um, uh, okay, f of t is equal to this thing. So when I substitute x in this for f of t, this quantity represents x. This quantity is x. So sine omega t, uh, sine omega t minus uh, theta is itself. So that um, finally we can find f of t, the magnitude of f of t is equal to mu omega square kx square plus cw uh, just using the radical sign for both of the nominator and the uh, denominator we have this relation and this can be uh, easily represented with um, uh, simplified form so this is the force transmitted to the foundation now let's take a practical example of these issues <clears throat> what we have discussed here yeah so uh, this is one of example that we can illustrate uh, this type of uh, situations in machinery. So an electric machine, motor of mass, uh, total mass and mounted on elastic foundation is found to vibrate with um, a deflection of uh, 0.12 m at resonance. So that is resonance deflection is given. Uh, it is known that the unbalanced mass of motor is 12% uh, of the total mass. Okay, that means m is equal to 0 0.1 to m. Okay, the rotor, uh, okay, due to manufacturing tolerance used, and the damping ratio of, of the foundation is found to be 0 0.05. So uh, determine the following quantities. One, the centric city. <coughs> The second one is the peak deflection of the motor uh, when the frequency ratio varies from resonance. And the third one is the additional mass to be added uh, uniformly to the motor if the deflection of the motor is uh, at resonance is to be reduced 0 0.0 meter. Initially, uh, uh, so, these are the given quantities. So we can see here, this is the motor, rotating motor, which is rotated with uh, omega, that is uh, radial speed of omega, or rotating with some RPM. And the total mass of mass is considered M, and it is uh, placed on uh, elastic foundation K and the C. So, and there is a small mass which is placed, uh, which is considered 12% of the total mass, which is situated at E distance from rotation center. Okay, this is here with, uh, represented with a small m. And consider this as the uh, reference position. Okay. <clears throat> so let's uh, solve this equation. So we have given m 0.12 m, x 0.12 uh, means the amplitude, and zeta is equal to 0.05, and x resonance given 0.06 m. So eccentricity, x max, and additional mass are required for m additional, m a. Let me call it as m a. Now, we have x is equal to m e omega square. 
uh, over radical of k minus m omega square plus cw square, uh, which means r square or xm over me, which is equal to r square over radical of one minus r square, the whole square minus plus two zeta r the whole square. This is the amplitude equation or steady state amplitude equation. So the deflection at resonance means, uh, that means R is equal to, this resonance means R is equal to one. That means uh, rotating frequency or forcing frequency and the natural frequency coincidence. So, which is given by uh, XM over ME from this equation, uh, R is equal to one. So that we calculate it um, and that gives us uh, 10. XM over M. From that, uh, eccentricity is equal to XM over uh, 10M. Okay, 10 is uh, this thing. Uh, so E comes out directly. We use this. So E is equal to XM over 10M. So, which is equal to X is already given the uh, uh, amplitude that the resonance is given. So that 0.12 M over 10, M is 0.12 M. So we can cancel M by M. Finally, we get this 0.1 meter is the centric city from uh, the, the offset of uh, mass from rotation center. B, the peak deflection of the motor when the frequency ratio varies from resonance. Uh, so what is the peak deflection of the motor? Let's see, XM over ME <coughs> at maximum condition. What we are saying here is at maximum condition. So we calculated this maximum condition in our previous um, the derivation. So what's that? At maximum condition, we have uh, R is equals to one over radical of one minus two zeta square. This is R at maximum condition. And the corresponding maximum value of Mx, M capital X over M uh, small m e max is equals to one over two zeta radical one minus, one minus zeta square. This is the condition. So uh, substituting this equation, we can get Mx, me, uh, capital M, capital X over small m E uh, at maximum condition, which is equal to 10.0125. So here, uh, this is uh, unitless. So M is M, M and M are kilogram, program, okay. X and the E are meter, meter, so cancel each other. Anyway, unitless. So then, <coughs> uh, X max, X max is equals to uh, this quantity times uh, ME over M, okay? Just uh, click crossing. Finally, we can get uh, uh, this M is equals to 0 0.12 M. So M cancel by M. Finally, we can get this 0 0.1202 meter is the X max, okay? And the third case, uh, that means we have uh, XM ME, which is equal to R squared. So, sorry, I go back. Uh, the C case, the next case is, if an additional mass ME added to the motor, then the corresponding deflection is, now we are going to find the additional mass. Uh, so we have this uh, situation at, at the A from, this is taken from A, case A. So from here, M plus MA, instead of M, we need some additional mass, MA. So M plus MA, uh, X resonance over, me so which is equal to 10 
which implies m plus ma times 0 0.075. This is a resonance um, amplitude. Um, we have given a resonance amplitude for this situation. Okay. Uh, 0 0.075. Okay. Uh, it is actually 0 0.06 here. Sorry. 0 0.06. So uh, there is some uh, correction here 0 0.06. Okay, so m is 0 0.12 times m times e is already calculated, that is 0 0.1. So finally, we get uh, just calculating this additional mass is equal to 0 0.6 meter. So this is additional uh, six times m. m means uh, the bigger the whole mass. So that is 60% of mass. <laughs> mass of the system. Uh, therefore, the mass of the motor is to be increased by 60% in order to reduce the deflection at a resonance 0 0.12 meter to 0 0.075 meter. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the question. Mm. We have uh, done, I think, we have done this type of question here. Yeah, not done, but uh, let me take example, the same example as we have. <coughs> uh, okay, and this is example two. Example two. Uh, I, I think I saw this question in somewhere. Anyways, let's repeat it. So the electric motor and it is based on a combined mass of M32 kg. Inside the motor, uh, there is an unbalancing rotor, which can uh, be modeled as seen at the, uh, 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 this, okay, it is shown here. The base of the motor is constrained to move vertically only, horizontal are not allowed, okay. The motor is running at constant speed omega, which is equal to nine rad per second. Each of the four spring has constant of uh, 1,880 Newton meter. The mass of uh, the imbalance mass, uh, which is uh, including the 32 kg, uh, it is 0 0.8 kilogram. Centric mass is 0 0.8 kilogram. So, what the centricity of imbalance ME mass E would result in the steady state amplitude of X, which is 10 millimeter. So, now we have, uh, now as here it is assumed that uh, C is ignored. So, damping is ignored from this system. Uh, that means <coughs> the damping part will be. Uh, zero, given zero. So, as we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture, our component of force which produces excitation or um, vibration is uh, the vertical component, and the horizontal one will be zero. So, these are the given parameters mass 32, small mass is so, our. Um, uh, the mass which produces vibration or um, un unbalancing mass, 0 0.8. Uh, the radial speed or the speed of the motor is uh, nine rad per second. The stiffness of each, uh, uh, this thing, are 1,880 Newton per meter. And uh, the steady state amplitude, 10 millimeter, that means uh, maximum amplitude. And the damping constant C0, so required only centric city or the uh, location where uh, from the center of rotation. 
where the small mass will uh, locate it. Okay, so x is equal to m mu omega square over uh, k minus m omega square is whole square plus cw square. Uh, this is the general equation or in the form of uh, a reduced form, we have xm over m mu, which is equal to r square, one minus r square, plus two zeta r square. Now, c is equal to zero means uh, we have um, this thing, uh, uh, c zero means this will be zero. We have left this part only. So uh, it is squared, so it can come out. So x is equal to m e omega square over k minus m uh, omega square, capital M omega square. So from that, or we can represent it in different form, m small m e omega square over k times one minus uh, r square. Okay, this is uh, one representation. Uh, someone can represent it as um, mm, mer square over capital M times one minus R square. So all of them gives, uh, all of this equation gives the same answer actually. Uh, we can prove it later. Okay, let's, let's take the first part, this one, okay, uh, this equation. So 0 0.01, sorry, is equals to, this is 0 0.01 is the uh, X. This uh, X is given in millimeters, so that in meter, what, what we are doing is meter. Most of the uh, unit consistency must be maintained. And uh, centric mass is 0 0.8 kg. The centric city is a known parameter and omega is nine. Uh, so omega square over uh, k is equals to four times our k, uh, okay, k is equals to four times k because springs are uh, in parallel. So four springs are there, four times uh, k. So four times this quantity gives us uh, 7,520, okay? Yeah. And M is 32, and omega uh, square is nine square. So finally we get 0 0.7 from this relation, we can get 0 0.7605 meter is the eccentric city. So this distance is 0. Point, uh, sorry, 0. 0.76, 0. 0.7605 meter is the eccentric distance from here to here on the mass. Okay. So. Another is the same, all the same, because uh, I provided you here uh, case one, case two, case three. So three different formulas are there that someone can make exercise on them, okay? This formulas, this formulas. This is alternatively, I checked. Another third example is, <clears throat> We have two rotating mass, uh, two rotating system, which are uh, uh, placed on uh, uh, spring uh, K over two and K over two means a spring K supports this system as a whole. And also the foundations of with um, a viscous nineteen uh, is given like this. So the arrangement is as shown here. Half mass is in this side, uh, centric mass m over two is in this side, and another centric mass uh, located in symmetric position is like this. The total mass is m, and the rotation of uh, this thing, um, uh, omega, uh, in this direction, and omega. So 
they are rotating uh, in the same symmetric form. The rotations are symmetric, so that even when there's no any constraint on them, the horizontal component of force are always canceling to each other. Even uh, <coughs> so, we have left only the vertical component of uh, uh, eccentric force or centrifugal force, which uh, pulls the system outward. Okay. So here, uh, two centric masses rotating in opposite direction at the same speed. It is to be used as a um, uh, mechanical shaker over the frequency range of 20 to 30 hertz. So we are required to find the eccentric distance or radius E from center of rotation, the total mass of the system M, the small mass of uh, this M over two and M over so M, and then K of the system. And finally, the uh, damping uh, C to satisfy uh, the, the following requirements. One, uh, the mean power output of the shaker should, act, should be at least one horsepower. This is one of the condition. Another condition is the amplitude of vibration of the mass should be between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Two inch. So these are X max. Um, so uh, our X max is 0 0.0.1 less than or equal to X max. X max less than or equal to 0 0.2. This is another condition. This is power P is equal to uh, one horsepower, one HP. And the third condition is the mass of the shaker M, the total mass M should be at least 50 times that of centric mass. So this implies M is equal to 50 times of, 50 times of a smaller M or centric mass. So no, these are given, okay, these are the given conditions, <laughs> at least. So this greater than or equal to, we can say here it has greater than or equal to. Okay, so how we can solve this? Uh, the first thing is uh, we have vertical and horizontal component everywhere. So the vertical components are always cancel to each other Why? because one is opposite to another. Look here, this is to the right, this is to the left, but both vertical components are always to the vertical direction. Okay, tangent to the rotation axis, okay? So the total centric mass in this direction, you know, centric force in this direction. So the vertical component is the one which can cause uh, vibration. So the unbalanced force in the horizontal direction can cancel to each other so that H is equal to zero. Uh, F of H, let me say, horizontal force F of H is equal to zero. And the vertical component of force are the sum of the two, this plus this. So that it is two times, <coughs> uh, two times of M over two omega square E sine omega T. So this is the vertical component. Now, the general equation of motion for this case, considering the vertical uh, part uh, is mx, sorry, here it is the dot dot, here there is dot and mx uh, dot dot plus cx dot plus kx which is equal to m omega squared e sine omega t. This is the equation of motion. And the solution for this equation of motion is x of t is equal to x sine omega t minus pi. And the steady state amplitude of this motion is m e r square over m times radical one minus r square square plus two zeta r. 
and the pi, this pi is equal to tan inverse of two zeta over one minus r square. Uh, so this r implies omega over omega n, and omega n is uh, radical of k over m. So the frequency range is given like this. Okay, 20 hertz uh, less than or equal to omega, omega less than or equal to 30 hertz. So we have to change this uh, frequency f to omega uh, because uh, the one which we are using is the uh, rotational speed omega. So omega is equal to 2 pi f. So this 20 hertz means uh, 125.6637 rad per second. While 30 hertz means uh, 188.4956 rad per second. And the amplitude range is given 0 0.1 inch uh, to 0 0.2 inch, so that we use metric units. So this is 0.00254 meter, and this one is 0.00508 meter. So we changed it since one inch is equal to 0 0.0254 meter. And the mean power output uh, over a time period uh, zeta, let me say some zeta, is given by uh, p over one over zeta, uh, the whole f of t dx uh, tau d tau. So, which gives this tau, which is equal to 2 pi over omega, that is the time period of uh, frequency, or the time period of oscillation, 2 pi over omega. So, f of t is equal to the, <coughs> uh, that already uh, we defined, m omega square e sine omega t. So, now, here dx of dt, because f of t is this thing, okay? And uh, this quantity, let's define this quantity, dx zeta, which is, uh, we have x of t is equal to, uh, x of t, which is equal to x sine omega t, x sine omega t plus pi minus pi actually. So dx dt, <coughs> which is equal to omega x cos omega t minus pi. So we can substitute these equations into here and uh, here uh, in order to uh, find this situation. Now, let's go. So our um, one over uh, uh, the times two pi over omega. So yeah. So we can substitute it here. Uh, I didn't did it, but uh, I'll see whether I added it in the final. Yeah, it is added here, so no problem. Okay, so substituting those two equations in, into this equation, we have this relation. Okay. So, and uh, sine omega t cos omega t minus pi dt. Uh, so we, Define this cos omega t minus pi, which is equal to this quantity. Yeah, so cos we know cos a plus b is equal to well, mathematically we know this thing uh, cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. But cos A minus B <coughs> sorry, this is uh, cold season, so uh, that's why. 
that is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So that relation is added here. So finally, uh, multiplying this thing, um, this cos pi is uh, came out here. So we have uh, left sine omega t cos omega t dt because I multiplied this quantity first and this quantity next. So we have left this term. So then uh, we can go here sine omega pi cos omega uh, pi dt. Uh, and we have left here sine square omega t. So this cos omega t, um, sine omega t, cos omega t becomes one over uh, two sine omega t. And then uh, let us uh, consider, uh, but we can directly use, let u is equals to omega t. Let this thing be uh, u then let's consider sine u, cos u, okay? Sine u, cos u, uh, then uh, dt is equals to d, du over omega. So du is equals to uh, uh, one over uh, this thing, so that we have uh, uh, sine u, cos u, du over uh, one over omega. So one over omega come out, so sine u, cos u du. Again, uh, uh, we can call it uh, sine u is equals to g, then uh, dg is equals to cos u du. This just mathematical uh, expression. So finally, <coughs> the, the integral of g du, which is equals to one over omega g square. So which is equal to one over omega sine square uh, omega t over two. So this is uh, this component, the integral of uh, sine omega t cos omega t dt. Uh, this is actually very easy. Uh, any uh, uh, Anyone who have background on uh, a simple trigonometric relation and the calculus can easily substitute these results, but just to illustrate the thing properly, that's why I follow this thing. Again, this sine square omega t uh, dt uh, gives us uh, sine square ax is equal to one minus cos two ax over two. So substituting this in the uh, equation, what we can get uh, uh, one minus cos two ax over two dx, which is equal to one over two dx minus one over two cos two ax. Again, now, uh, this means uh, this from this we can get x over two uh, minus one over two two a uh, cos two a x uh, d two a x. Actually, to make uh, this thing very simple, just uh, what I did here, I will multiply it here two a x here only d x. So I may I put it two x. Okay, when I multiply it by two, I have one over two a here. Okay, so that this can easily get out a sine of two uh, omega uh, a uh, two a eight. So zeta over two minus our x is zeta actually. Uh, our x is this zeta. So zeta over two minus one over four omega, uh, our A is omega, okay? Sine two omega zeta is our solution for this component, okay? So substituting this uh, into our equation, um, sorry. So we can substitute uh, the power equation uh, with the above values. Okay. Uh, for the range of uh, our calculation, one minus cos of omega t, two over uh, two omega. That means this equation, cos pi times this thing. 
and here sine pi times uh, zeta over two minus one over four omega. So from zero to uh, t, uh, t. Uh, so the frequency. So what we can get finally p is equals to m omega q e x over two sine uh, pi. So every steps are written here precisely, so one can uh, follow the steps from it. So the horse one horsepower is equal to 735.5. Uh, the conversion from horsepower to uh, watt. This is what uh, for our unit consistency. So we have this relation. Now what this sign pi. As we know, pi is equal to tan inverse of two zeta r um, one minus r square. So we can make a small arrangement of trigonometry. So sine pi means this quantity. So substituting the in terms of sine pi, finally we can get this equation. Okay, so this is the equation. Okay, so power is already obtained. So the uh, power. Uh, will be uh, related with our uh, parameters, okay? Two zeta r, uh, no, zeta r m omega cube e x over radical of one minus r squared the whole square plus two zeta r the whole square. So this is the power. So we have given this parameter. This is already given one. Again, amplitude is given parameter so that we can put this uh, results uh, in order to get the quantities, uh, which uh, required quantities like M, R, uh, E, not R actually, M, E, capital M, uh, damping uh, constant uh, C, uh, uh, the stiffness of material K. So that can be easily obtained from the above questions. So another final uh, example on this area is uh, we can find this example in uh, uh, in the vibration uh, textbook. So it talks about the Francis turbine. So this Francis turbine, the construction of Francis turbine, uh, it is bearing supported here. here. So there are bearing shafts are there, and there are also uh, blades or so rotating blades are here. Okay, so there are water flow from this direction and this direction, and uh, trail race also here. Okay, and there is a small gap between uh, this uh, starter and the rotor. So we have stator here. The stator is a stationary component, mechanical component, and the rotor is the rotating component. So that a turbine blade actually. So the shaft is the one which gives rotational speed to this system. And there is a clearance here for the shaft, five millimeter uh, clearance here, five millimeter clearance. So beyond five millimeter, it cannot go because there is a constraint from the uh, rotor, uh, or no, starter. So what the example says, figure below is a schematic diagram of Francis turbine, a uh, water turbine, in which water flows from A into blade B. So there is a water flow from A to blade B. So, uh, and down into the trail uh, race C. So it goes like this, water comes through here, it hits the blade and then comes out like this. So it is like that. So trail race is here. So the rotor has a mass of 250 kg. This is a total rotor mass and can unbalance uh, and uh, have an unbalanced uh, mass. Mass times actually centric city given here, eight kg millimeter. Okay, mass eight kg. Um, mass times uh, centric city is given. It is combined. Uh, so 
the radial clearance between the rotor and the starter is five millimeter. So there is a gap between here, which is five millimeter. That is the maximum amplitude that the thing can swivel uh, or vibrate. The turbine operates in the speed of range 600 to 6,000 RPM. So N1, the smallest, uh, N minimum 600, and N maximum is uh, 6,000 RPM. And the steel shaft carrying the rotor can be assumed to be clamped as bearings. So it is here bearings are for the world. It is clamped by bearing here. Okay. So determine the diameter of the shaft. So I uh, requested the diameter of this shaft. Okay. What is this D, which is required? So this um, question needs the knowledge of uh, machine element uh, in mechanical engineering course. So those who have good background on machine element can easily understand the question. So, okay. So actually, uh, I have taught machine element for, for more than three or four times uh, for BTEC students so that uh, I can easily understand what the questions and what is uh, the last. So now the length of uh, shaft, which is actively uh, uh, participating in the rotation given two meters. <coughs> okay, so. Damping is also neglected here, okay? So what is the solution? Our solution, the steady state amplitude is directly uh, obtained for rotating unbalanced scales, me omega square over. This is the equation directly from the previous uh, calculated or uh, case. So which this means, uh, XM capital X uh, capital M over M is equals to R square uh, one minus R square as whole square plus two zeta as whole square. This is the relation. We have M already given here. Okay, so we have to change this into kilogram meter. Okay, so M250 kilogram. ME eight kilogram millimeter. This should be uh, this should be zero point zero zero eight kilogram meter. Should be like this. Okay. Uh, length two meter. The shaft length is uh, two meter given. Uh, rotational speed varies from six hundred rpm to uh, 6,000 RPM. So we have to change the RPM to uh, grad per second. So uh, the relation uh, RPM, that means omega is equal to 2 pi n. Uh, 2 pi n divided by 60, which is 2 pi n over 60 is the formula for uh, converting uh, RPM to rad per second. So when we convert uh, it, the minimum one is 2.831 rad per second, the maximum one is 628.3185 rad per second. And the natural frequency, which is K over M, so uh, K is not known, so K over 250 rad per uh, no, yeah, right per second. So once we know these quantities, we can substitute uh, the equation. So x is given, uh, which is equals to in meter 0 0.005 meter. So 0 0.005 meter is equals to just uh, implementing this equation for a smaller uh, RPM, we can get uh, uh, K, which is 9,093,278.56 Newton per meter is the K value. Uh, for maximum case, 
to a maximum RPM case, uh, we can find just RPM is maximum. So on this equation, just we add maximum RPM. Uh, what you can get? 99.327 uh, uh, times 10 to the power of six Newton uh, per meter. That means almost uh, 99 million. Uh, uh, so very big number stiffness. So this question is not completed actually. Uh, our aim is to calculate the diameter. Yeah, it's completed actually. So what? Um, From the above uh, observations, from these two, observing the this figure, actually we have to observe the, this uh, m over x over m x capital M small m x capital M capital x over small m eccentricity e ratio, which is just this diagram. Observing this diagram. We find that the amplitude of uh, vibration of the rotation of sharp can be minimized by selecting high value of frequency ratio, high value of frequency ratio. So we have to select high value of frequency ratio. Means, for example, uh, uh, if we go beyond this, around here, it is a region of resonance. Okay. If we come to here, we can observe the, uh, the diminishing of these things. So maybe around here, some appropriate values may be obtained. So this means that uh, omega n over uh, omega n must be made, uh, be made small compared to omega. That is, k must be made small. So from the 2k means we have different value of k. One of the k value is uh, higher stiffness, uh, smaller stiffness, that is 993,278 Newton per meter. And another one is 99,300,847 Newton meter. So that uh, k must be uh, made small in order to obtain uh, appropriate this thing means uh, to obtain higher value of RPM, because you see, uh, which is equals to omega rotating speed omega over uh, radical of k over m. So if k is smaller, omega over omega and this value become higher, OK? So that can be obtained using the smaller value of k. So we selected k. Uh, 9,993,278.56k is selected. Since the stiffness of the cantilever beam, now uh, our shaft is uh, supported here on the bearing and carrying this load here. So that it is considered as a cantilever beam. Means it is like this a cantilever beam having some weight as a, it is like this. So, so this is the shaft diameter in our case. So from the uh, uh, design of machine element course, we have K is equal to three EI over LQ. Or it is there in the strength of material course also. Uh, but this I, E is the uh, youngest modulus of material. Uh, I is the uh, geometric property that is uh, pi D, the power of 4 over 64, uh, which is the moment of inertia. Uh, uh, so what we can get from here, just substituting uh, K value, this uh, quantity here, 
and uh, finally we can obtain D, which is 127 millimeter diameter, uh, which means about 63.5 millimeter radius of the shaft. So that is a circular shaft, solid circular shaft with diameter is equal to um, pi by one to seven. Uh, maybe from the standard uh, chart, it may be 130 or 125 will be selected. So mostly 130. I consider it as 130 by 130 uh, diameter. So this is all about today's lecture. Uh, so if you have any question or queries, please put it uh, frankly. Uh, yeah, just put your idea on the YouTube only. Then I can check it. Okay, thank you very much for uh, watching it. Uh, uh, this is um, for today.